All right, Crystal, what's on your radar? Well, I wanted to give a quick thank you this morning to the one and only Rahm Emanuel. You know, I was poking around the news on Sunday thinking about what I wanted to talk to you all about today, and I was frankly undecided. I've got a lot of thoughts on Katie Hill being forced to resign by revenge porn, on how the media is trying to make the outcome of impeachment suspenseful, when in fact we all know exactly how this is going to end, and on Joe having hilariously taken credit for Bernie not having a super PAC because he said people can't possibly trust you if you do, and now, lo and behold, Joe it's got a super pack. But Rom, well, buddy, you made my decision easy by writing an absolutely perfect anti-Medicare for all screed in the Washington Post. And by perfect, I mean deliciously wrong and completely lacking in self-awareness in every way. You know what gets me going, and this was way too good to resist. All right, so first some context. Rahm Emanuel has a long history of opposing really any kind of health care reform. He's the guy who reportedly begged Obama not to pursue health care reform at all, and then begged him to pursue a much more limited plan than Obamacare. Then he spiked the public option that he now is actually advocating for. We're going to get to that in a moment. He's also the guy who helped write NAFTA, spiked extreme poverty by helping to end welfare and help push through that disastrous 94 crime bill that supercharged mass incarceration and was generally an integral part of turning the Democratic Party away from the working class and towards the professional class, which has really worked out great for all involved. Rahm is also the guy who works for a big Wall Street firm called Centerview Partners that has a bunch of health industry clients, of course. All of this context may have been helpful for the Washington Post provide, but they were too busy giving a platform to a pro-industry shill to take down the central plank of Bernie's campaign platform. All right, so here's the article. Someone needs to say it, Medicare for all is a pipe dream. Now, let me stop right there, because I don't know how closely Mr. Emanuel follows politics, but plenty of someones have actually already said it. Thank you very much. Allow me to introduce you to Joe Biden, John Delaney, Pete Buttigieg, Amy Klobuchar, Steve Bullock, Michael Bennett, John Hickenlooper, industry ad buys during Democratic primary debates, every debate moderate, moderator ever, and also you. We've taken a position so far, and the candidates have, through the process, a few have not, about on basically Medicare for all, which is we're going to eliminate 150 million people's health care, and we're going to provide health care for people that just come over the border. That is an untenable position for the general election. I, as you know, George, I just biked around Lake Michigan, nearly a thousand miles, through Michigan and Wisconsin, two really important states. Nobody at a diner ran at me and said, take my health care away. Nobody. This is this is reckless as it relates to, and you don't have to take the position to win the primary, and you're basically literally hindering yourself for the general election. So there you go. But please proceed to your oh-so-original argument. So here's Rom's first point. I'm mystified as to why when 90% of Americans already have insurance, our presidential debates are focused so exclusively on expanding coverage rather than containing costs. Yes, to those millions of Americans with no coverage, honestly, why do we care? That's the spirit, guys. And also, did it occur to you that Medicare for All is not only about coverage, but also about reducing costs? We pay way more than every single payer nation and get worse results, so there's that too. All right, Rom's next point, quote, Maybe you think Medicare for All is the way to go. If so, please explain to me exactly how we get that bill through the Senate. Remember, in 2010, we had 58 Democratic senators, yet we weren't even able to get a vote on a public option. Now, this one is really rich, since Rom himself was an integral part of why there was no vote on the public option. What's more, the this will be hard argument applies just as much to the public option that Rom has now embraced as it does to Medicare for All. Remember, Rom, as you just said, you had 58 Democratic senators and you couldn't pass a public option, the very thing that you are now saying we could get through a much less favorable Senate. Do you think that Mitch and his gang have gotten more accommodating? The only way this gets done is through an organized grassroots uprising forcing Washington to do their bidding. Medicare for All is the kind of transformational change that can galvanize that kind of support. Medicare for Choice and America and those who want it and industry shills manifestly cannot. The bottom line, Rom then informs us, is that there's simply no path to enacting Medicare for All in the current political environment and promising something we can't deliver will do nothing but depress Democratic turnout in years to come. Well, I will say, since he's a key architect of NAFTA and of the Obama years where Democrats lost state houses, governor's mansions, and congressional seats galore, Rom is something of an expert on depressing Democratic turnout. So please proceed. Quote, 
since we're already proposing to rewrite the tax code, decriminalize the border, give everyone free college, and eliminate the use of fossil fuels with the Green New Deal, all initiatives that will require us to expend enormous amounts of political capital, maybe we want to be strategic on at least one big ticket item. You see here, Rom just couldn't resist giving up the game. His contempt-laden remarks expose that his issue isn't really with Medicare for All specifically. It's with this new idea, with some parts of the Democratic Party at least, where they might actually attempt to address the big issues facing the country rather than collapse every single thing, even basic human rights and the very survival of the planet, into nothing but tactics and power jockeying. You can just picture the drafts folder where he's got the Green New Deal as a pipe dream and canceling student debt as a pipe dream and ending the war on drugs as a pi pipe dream op-eds all ready to send into willing mainstream outlets. It's all an impossible pipe dream. Better things aren't possible. That is the corporatist mantra. Everything is possible for industry and nothing is possible for the working class, except the status quo of struggle and rot and addiction. Well, you know what, Rom? The status quo has led to massive working class uprisings in Chile and France and Lebanon and all kinds of places around the world, not to mention right here at home, and helped to pave the path directly to Donald Trump. So while the world is burning, if you don't mind, I think we might try actually delivering for once for the working class. Um, Sagar, at the same time over the weekend, Donny Deutsch oh, on right. Bill Maher also made these crazy comments about like, my parents worked hard so that I could have health care, and if my yes. children don't get there, then we're gonna be frickin' Denmark, as if that's like a yeah. terrible thing. Denmark has way better health care system and way better health results than we do. It's so. a foolish point. I don't yeah. want to be Denmark, for, for the record. <laughs> I used to live there. Um, but what I will say about Rahm Emanuel is, the idea that it takes any courage whatsoever right. to be like someone has someone to say has it. to say, and it's like Rom, literally all literally of everyone, everyone is saying it. Like <laughs> you don't need to say it. Actually, you are a terrible mayor and you are a terrible <laughs> chief of staff. Just like fade into the Wall Street existence and go to a penthouse in New York. Right. Like why are you doing this? Right. And, <laughs> and not to mention, like, has everyone else already said it? But you yourself have already yeah. said it. Like we Just get it. The entitlement of these people and the idea that we should care what they. Have have to say is incredible to me. Like I was just at Politicon yeah. and you know over the weekend and you're watching like James Carville and these guys opine on the state of America. Look, these guys were titans in their day. There's no question, but like 1992 was a long time ago, right. James. And maybe you don't know as much about the country as you did. I want the real thing is like these guys were relevant in their time. And that doesn't mean for any reason, that we should be thinking that they know what's going on in our time. But not only yeah. that, yes, they were relevant yeah. in their time, but they also laid down a really terrible track record yeah, that set us on a bad us course. Right. I mean, when you think about NAFTA, when yeah. you think about um, trade relations with China, when you think about TPP, when yeah. you think about right deregulating the banks, I mean, all of this stuff laid at their feet, not to mention mass incarceration, yeah. all of those things architected by these guys and they still think they want to tell the Democratic Party the path forward when their way has manifestly failed, both from a sort of human perspective, from a policy perspective in terms of putting our country in a better place, but also if your narrow metric is just winning, like, look around the country. We've lost yeah, everything, right. right? I mean, that's you have lost so much of the country through your way. Maybe you ought to let some new voices and some new approaches break through. Yeah, they just won't admit it, and they'll never admit they're wrong. Next on Rising, big tech has become a major focus point in the Democratic presidential primary. My conversation with Senator Marsha Blackburn on the impact of technology and the task force she's leading in the Senate Judiciary Committee. Plus, hometown comedian Dave Chappelle is this year's recipient of the Mark Twain Prize. Bill's Judy Kurtz was there for the big night. She's going to share some moments from that night coming up.